Hey YouTube, this is Noah with Sparksite. As always, our goal here is to make video easy. It's been a while since I've been up here to talk about PC parts and video editing, and since then a number of exciting things have happened. The biggest of all was Intel's new generation of processors which perform exceptionally well and are very competitively priced. And best of all, you can actually buy them. So as we go into 2022, we wanted to walk through the main things to be looking out for when putting together or buying a PC for editing. You may notice we've got a number of parts here on the table, and these are the different components that we've selected for a new editing computer here at Sparksite to replace one of the older ones you may have seen us build several years ago. Now, here at Sparksite, we primarily use Adobe Premiere and After Effects, so that's what we're gonna be orienting this discussion around. But remember, there is no such thing as a good computer for all use cases. If you're using other programs, we strongly recommend checking out benchmarks for those particular programs. So let's get started. We're gonna go through the different PC parts we've selected one at a time, touching on why we chose them and giving general recommendations for what kind of parts you should care about in a new PC. So first is the processor, which is, as many people say, the main brain of the computer. It's the thing doing most of the actual computing, performing all of the calculations necessary to run your software and render your videos. Unless you have some weird bottleneck somewhere else, Upgrading the CPU is what's gonna have the single biggest impact on your overall performance, especially in editing programs. The CPU we selected was the Intel i9-12900K from the newest 12th generation of Intel processors. It's unique in that it has eight normal high performance cores like you'd usually find in processors, as well as eight lower performance efficiency cores. There's a good reason for this sort of weird kind of hybrid combination in that Intel is attempting to balance performance in lesser powered applications like a web browser, for example, with more demanding applications like editing software. This new approach means that the processor can more dynamically scale between applications that need a lot of power from a few cores and those that use less power across more cores. Results so far have shown that their efforts are paying off. Uh, according to Puget's benchmarks, this is now the best performing consumer grade processor for Premiere and After Effects. If we look at a price to performance chart for Adobe Premiere, we can see pretty clearly that the 12900K is a fantastic deal compared to the previous champions, which was AMD's Ryzen 5000 series. Particularly interesting is that the 5950X, originally priced at $800, is beaten out by a chip, this one here, that is $200 cheaper than it. If we add in a few more of the processors from Intel's new generation, the 12700K, which has eight performance cores and four efficiency cores at about $410, and the 12600K, which has six performance cores and four efficiency cores at about $290, we can see that Intel is bringing a lot of value to the table. If we shift over to these scores in After Effects, we get a similar result. When comparing any two similarly priced Ryzen 5000 and Intel 12th gen parts, they are anywhere from six to 14% faster in After Effects and 25 to 45% faster in Premiere. But a few caveats. Processors like the 5950X, while it might seem weird that they cost so much more, still have a reason to be priced as high as they do. They still have more cores and perform noticeably better in other applications. It's just that with Premiere and After Effects specifically, we have a clear winner for this generation. And that would be the 12900K and just a step down from that, the 12700K. My recommendation would be that if you are building something new right now, shoot for one of these new Intel processors, preferably at least the 12700K if you can manage it. If you already have something from AMD's 5000 series, say, or Intel's uh, 11th generation, you'll most likely be fine with waiting a little bit longer. Oftentimes, the incremental performance jumps between generations just isn't worth the significant cost that happens each time. So let's take a look at this thing. So I've always commented on the fact that it seems like every generation Intel tries to outdo themselves with how ridiculous they make uh, the packaging. And this time around is no different, though I do kind of like the uh, fake uh, processor wafer look that they've got going on here. Um, and on the inside, of course, we have the processor itself. It always amazes me how this tiny little piece of metal here is like worth $700 and I'm holding it in my hand and throwing it around like a complete maniac, but here we are. So to keep this beast of a processor cool, we once again got the old reliable, the Noctua NHD15S, a gigantic tower air cooler. Now you need a special adapter to make this 
heatsink work with the Intel 12th generation processors, which you can get on the uh, Noctua website or Amazon or wherever you want. Uh, but it's the same as the normal installation process. You just have to use this instead of what comes in the box. A little bit of a hassle, but it's totally worth it. This thing outperforms some of the much more expensive water cooling solutions. But my favorite thing about it is that it's just quiet and I don't really have to worry about it. And yeah, I know it looks kind of ugly, okay, but we're gonna have it enclosed inside of a case that you can't see through. And if looks matter to you, Noctua does have a black version of this same cooler and some cool accessories that can make it look a little bit better. And then for the motherboard, which the processor is going to socket into, we got the MSI Z690 Wi-Fi DDR4 motherboard. Motherboards have such hilariously long, confusing names, but the point is it's the MSI Z690A board. The motherboard is the component that everything else connects to. And while it doesn't contribute to performance, I wanted to mention it here since it's important to pick one that is reliable and has the connectivity that you need. Motherboards are often locked to specific generations of processors from either AMD or Intel. In the case of the 12th generation Intel processors, we need a specific socket, which is currently only found on Z690 motherboards like this one. This motherboard also has a number of uh, places to put high speed NVMe drives, which we'll be using, and decent USB connectivity on the front and back panels uh, of the PC. However, the most important thing is that this motherboard also supports DDR4 memory. You see, DDR4 has been the memory standard for some time, but the new standard, DDR5, just came out and it has higher bandwidth, reduced latency, some other benefits that you may or may not be able to notice in everyday tasks, but technically, these new Intel chips support DDR5 memory. And many of the Z690 motherboards that you can buy right now are set up for DDR5 memory. Sounds great until you realize like I did that you can't buy DDR5 memory basically anywhere. So maybe you're watching this video in a few months and this isn't a problem anymore. In which case, great, go ahead and get a DDR5 memory kit and a DDR5 supporting motherboard. Puget has shown that this is a little faster with the new processors and maybe even faster in future updates to Windows and Premiere and After Effects. But if you're like us, trying to put together a PC right now DDR4 is readily available, quite cheap, and really not that much slower. So this is an example of some DDR4 memory. It's some G-Skill 2x32, so 64 gigabytes total. It's fast and reliable, and it'll be perfect for what we usually do in After Effects and Premiere. So this is just something to be wary of when selecting your parts, because DDR4 memory is physically incompatible with a DDR5 slot, and vice versa you are locking yourself into a specific motherboard depending on which memory you are able to get your hands on. So make sure you double check that the motherboard you get matches the memory that you get. Now, to put into these M.2 slots on the motherboard, we got two Sabrent Rocket NVMe drives. These are blazing fast and reliable, despite the fact that they're tiny and look like little sticks of gum. And we're gonna install the operating system on one and dump the Adobe Media Cache on the other. And as we've discussed before, separating out your operating system, media cache, and project files onto three separate drives is the way to go to maximize performance. So then you're probably wondering if that's where the operating system's going and that's where the media cache is going, where are you gonna put your project files? And well, we do have this nice four terabyte hard drive to just dump things on if necessary, but we found that when we are going back and forth, working from home, doing stuff all over the place, it's easier to just use nice, external drives like this, solid state drives with USB-C or Thunderbolt connectors, uh, in order to have fast storage that you can move back and forth between computers. For most of our projects, this works great, saves us a little bit of money on having to buy another internal drive and makes jumping between computers much easier. We just have to remember to back up decently often, which is something you should do often anyways. Of course, we also have a decent 850 watt power supply and the awesome, fractal design define case that we used on the previous build. Well, more specifically, this is the define seven, whereas the previous one was the define six, but you get the idea. Now, you may have noticed that there is a part missing from this ensemble up here, and that would be the GPU, the graphics card. This part of the PC is still stupendously difficult to get your hands on. Sure, if you're willing to pay about double the advertised price, you can find it all over the place, but at MSRP, good luck. 
So <laughs> we just, we don't have one yet. We wanted to have one for this video. I tried for many weeks to get one on the New Egg Shuffle, on Best Buy, on the Discord stock drops, and I wasn't able to get one like many, many other people across the world. Once we do get one, we'll actually put it in this computer and assemble it all together. The card that I was shooting to put into this build was going to be the RTX 3070. Nvidia cards still, by and large, perform better in Premiere and After Effects, so it's still good to lean in that direction if these are the main applications you use. The additional video memory on a 3080, and especially a 3090, can definitely be useful if you have very large or very high resolution projects, but that wasn't something we were as concerned about. Also, the prices just get absolutely bananas up in the realm of the 3080 and the 3090. Graphics cards are weird in that they sometimes can have a big impact on performance and other times they don't do much of anything. And it can change dramatically from project to project depending on what effects or plugins you're using or even the type of footage you are editing. The best advice I can give is to try and get some decent graphics card from this or the previous generation of Nvidia cards. This is probably something you can upgrade later if you need to, but if you have the cash or just the sheer luck and gumption necessary to get one of the RTX 30 series cards, those are definitely the way to go. And that's about it. This is somehow both an exciting time to be into PC building with the reinvigorated competition between Intel and AMD and a kind of depressing one with the GPU situation seemingly just stuck in a state of will this stuff ever be affordable? So it's bittersweet in a way. Either way, I'd take this over the way things were a year ago, that's for sure. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and all that stuff. Feel free to comment and discuss below whether you think now is a good time to be putting together a computer. We'll have links to the parts that we selected in the description, but just thanks so much for watching and see you in the next one.